The A350-2000, a conceptual stretch of the A350-1000, was Airbus's long-term answer to increasing demand for higher-capacity long-haul flying. Furthermore, the prospective variant would have sought to further the European plane maker's attempts at competing and fending off emerging interest in the upcoming 777X at the time, which was offered by rival Boeing. The Dash 2000 also could have been poised to develop the A350 family further with greater opportunities for airlines to leverage the capabilities to their advantage as a business. However, after much deliberation, Airbus decided to not proceed with this plane and would instead consider other means of helping develop the A350 program, which I find utterly fascinating. Would the A350-2000 have made more sense, or did what it eventually decided to proceed with just end up being the right decision? So the A350-2000 was envisaged as a longer, higher capacity variant of the Dash 1000 targeting airlines seeking an efficient replacement to planes such as the 747s and even it was touted the 777. By stretching the fuselage of the Dash 1000, Airbus hoped to accommodate up to 50 additional passengers, bringing the total capacity closer to almost the 450 mark in a typical two-class configuration. But as I'll always say, the 50 additional passengers could mean a whole lot. It could be the determining factor for an airline to add more economy seats or more upper class. The increase in size and seating would have looked to position this prospective variant even better than the likes of the 777 the counterpart also boasting quite hefty capabilities in the long-haul space. The A350-2000 existed through many other variant names. This could have been the A350 Stretch, A350-1100, and more, but it today is probably considered more as the Dash 2000, or at the very least, maybe the name with the most commonality, highlighting its stretch nature over the base models. The proposed stretch variant was speculated by industry leaders and would have looked to don't worry adopt all the composite materials and aerodynamic advancements that made airlines fall in love with the already flying variants that are today that we see. When Airbus decided, however, not to proceed with the A350-800 and instead consolidate the series into two variants, there were some onlookers that felt that this was the perfect balance to offer airlines. So when reporting emerged that a stretch could have been on the cards, there were obvious question marks over why the plane maker would look to pitch such a plane alongside the potential ramifications of moving ahead with this. From Airbus's POV, the A350-2000 was potentially a response to the industry which was only continuing to evolve and was requiring high-capacity aircraft, but in a more efficient manner. Airbus also wanted to make sure that it was adequately competing with the 777X. While the A350-1000 is broadly considered the competitor to the 777 there were some murmurs that Airbus may have looked to leverage its existing models to basically wipe out the 777X and provide a wide array of products in just the one series that would be considered a jack of all trades and mean that it would erode airlines' needs for a 777X, which Boeing was heavily trying to market in the 2010s in a bid to continue growing its own backlog for a highly anticipated jet back then. Another consideration for the A350-2000 was airlines moving away from quarter-engine planes, which came with high levels of capacity. Interestingly, the idea of airlines moving away from quad-engine planes, something Airbus definitely wasn't necessarily the biggest fans of, and it did play a role in why we also didn't see this aircraft type proceed with, as I'll get into just about now. So despite its promise, the Dash 2000 did come with its significant challenges if Airbus even wanted to proceed with it. And this along with many other reasons, is why it didn't move ahead. But one of the largest that was publicly documented was the idea in the mid-2010s that it would basically be cannibalizing an existing type. So in this period, the world's largest passenger plane, the A380, was still being produced. And Airbus was arguably of the stance that orders had slowed down. It didn't take rocket science to see this, but it still believed there was a future for this aircraft. And it was going through a pretty massive process of trying to push this plane to ensure that production could continue long into the future. We obviously know how this all played out. And that was, no one really wanted to order the A380 anymore. It was an aircraft that never really quite fared as maybe imagined when it was first studied 
and Airbus's intent was to never kill off the type with another one of its future aircraft. This is something it didn't want to do, and it felt the A350-2000 or a stretch would have potentially done that. Other factors such as reinforcing the structure and the need to dedicate so many resources to making this plane work were really determining factors for why it didn't want to proceed. Furthermore, they wanted to prioritise existing units, which, remember, at this point were just getting off the ground, and we even had one such as the A350 ULR, which was another enhanced option for Singapore Airlines. Airbus did officially abandon an A350-2000 after some deliberation and persistent speculation right across the industry, question marks and reporting too. It was arguably the right decision at the time, as discussed by analysts, who believe the odds were never quite in the favour of this variant proceeding internally for many reasons. Airlines who had to order new aircraft were realising at a more rapid rate the need to commit to planes that offered greater flexibility, and the argument was an A350-2000 may have not offered that over, say, current variants available. It is worth considering, as in the need for such an A350-2000, the multitude of resources that would have been required to make this a reality, and that stretches onwards to even the certification pathway. As the 20 2010s came to a close, the way planes were being certified was also dramatically changing, and moreover, Airbus had already invested heavily in other projects, including the A350-1000 ULR, and by now the 2020s, it was the A350F. These programs are for now deemed the future. They don't come with, say, new engines or anything all that flashy, but they are worth the investment and are going to present great results once flying. Airbus also has its A350-1000 available available to customers who want a high capacity jet. But again, so many airlines are now favouring flexibility. Does the A350-2000 have a future? Well, while conceptual planes won't always launch, their studies can be absolutely valuable for aircraft manufacturers as they develop future aircraft types decades in advance. Airbus confirmed towards the end of the 2010s that an A350-2000 didn't have a future in their commercial airplanes division for several reasons. The biggest, however, centred around a desire to focus on what was being offered at the time across the program. As such, Airbus believes that basically the current available A350 variants are the perfect amounts to pitch towards its airline customers and do fit in with their desired needs. Could an A350-2000 be part of the future Airbus aircraft portfolio? Well, obviously nothing can be ruled out. In 20 years, there may be a major re-engine and refinements that we see take place, a shifting of sequence numbers or something else. However, at least for the short term, and probably while I'll still be around covering the industry here on YouTube, Airbus has pretty much ruled this out through executive comments and is instead focusing on developing the aforementioned variants, which it is very, very excited about, and I'd argue us as aviation enthusiasts are excited to also see something a little bit different from this program. The 350 will be flying into the 2040s and beyond, and maybe the next plane they look to release is going to build upon all the next generation studies that we are seeing take place now as manufacturers know they need to be more sustainable, meet environmental targets, and so much more. Thanks a lot for your support here on the channel. Please take care, do be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis. And we'll fly.